Welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking at the Tundra set from Schmincke. So some of these colors appeared in my favorite video, which is the Potter's Pink video, where we mixed for Tundra Orange and Tundra Pink using Potter's Pink. And so I decided that I was going to see if I could mix all of the super granulating Schmincke colors. It's taken a bit, there were some odd pigments I had to track down for my palette, but I finally have them all, and so welcome to part one of ten of mixing for all the Schmincke super granulating colors. In reality, it's probably going to be an eleven part series, because at the very end, we're going to look at what all of the pigments are that make up all the colors, and find out just how many single pigment colors you'd need in your palette, to create the set yourself. So let's get into it. So everything is all labeled and let's get into doing our swatches. So Tundra Blue is probably my favorite blue in the entire Super Granulating series. Purely because on top of being a Super Granulating color, it also mixes incredibly well with other Super Granulating base colors as I've decided to call them, to create granulating mixes. So really with Tundra Blue and two to three other colors, you can have them in your palette and create sort of a granulating mixing palette, which is something I really enjoy. Tundra Green is something that I don't actually have in my palette. Most of these colors I've actually borrowed from my mom. I don't tend to lean towards the Schmincke Super Granulating colors. There are some that I have, but I tend to lean towards handmade granulating paints. Tundra Orange is one of my favorite colors and is a color that I can't wait to add to my own palette. We mixed it in the Potter's Pink video and it was so much fun and such a surprise because I'm not normally a fan of mixing oranges and it was actually a lot of fun. I'm just going to pull these out a little bit more. Just so that I have a lot of wash on them. This is the Bao Hong paper cold press because I don't really like rough paper, but for granulating paints like this, you want something with some texture to it. Tundra Pink is so much fun. It's very purpley pink. I wouldn't call it a true pink, but it is probably the pinkest color that appears in any of the sets. And then we've got Tundra Purple. I have so many colors similar to Tundra Purple from so many different handmade brands. Everyone seems to have their own version of it, which is great because it means that I was already familiar with it before Schmincke launched their version of it. So. We're going to start with the blue, and that has us going in with Lapis, which is PB29. Let's just move these so that I don't accidentally get stuck in them. So, let's move this. We've got Lapis, which is PB29, and Cypress Raw Umber Deep, which is PBR7. That's too dark. Oh yeah. That's too dark. Hmm. It could also be the wrong PBR7. Or the wrong blue. All right, let's do preliminary mixes of them all, and then I'll start switching up colors if I need to. So PG-19 was quite hard to track down. Only Daniel Smith seemed to have it available in their individual pigment line. 
and it is cobalt green pale and it was actually being discontinued my store only had one tube and it was in the clearance section it was quite hard to find but it's too brown and the binder has actually started to separate from my tube just because of how long I've been sitting there so I don't know that we're going to get a fully homogenous mixture because the binder is doing its own thing. I would say that isn't far off. Let me see if I can add a little bit more green. So I think they're using a different cobalt green. I think they're using a slightly more burnt cobalt green, potentially, because it's the green that's the issue. It's too, almost too green. Tundra orange, I know I can mix for, I've done it once. That being said, it's been a couple months. So let's see if I can get the ratios right just by like not really thinking about it. Let's see how that looks once it's dry. Tundra pink. It always surprises me that the blue comes ahead of the pink in the ratio for the pigment mixture because in a color like this I would expect pink to come first but it doesn't uh, and we have already gone too purple yeah we are too purple so we're still too purple it's I almost wonder if the pigment numbers are flipped on the tube because it is such a weird way to have to get this pigment by having the blue ahead. I don't think I managed to get the blue at a higher ratio last time either. This time it definitely wasn't, but that's pretty close. And now Tundra Purple, which is that same blue and PBR6, which in this case is Schmincke Mars Brown. I decided to go with the Schmincke version because I have it. I do have another version of PBR6 in my palette, but because I have it, I decided to start with their version. We're just a little bit off. Nope, now we're too brown. Colors. I don't know. What is that? I'm washing out. That might be it. So it's Tundra Blue. So I just dumped my paintbrush and paint. Tundra Blue is the one that I'm still not sure about. Like Tundra Orange is drawing the right color, Tundra Green isn't going to be the right color. My green's the wrong shade and that's the only version I have. <sighs> Which means that I think every mix that includes that green is going to be off. Luckily it doesn't appear in that many of the mixes going forward. 
but it does appear in some. So let's let this dry and then we'll come back and see what needs to be remixed. So I've decided to grab Jasper Stardust Viola Lee Blue because it's the most granulating ultramarine blue I have in my palette. And I think that's my issue here and here is that once it's dry, there just isn't enough separation, which is odd because this blue tends to really granulate, but maybe just in the mixes it's not. What's also interesting is that this is a PBR7 mix and this is a PBR6 mix. I hadn't noticed that it was just the difference in browns. So. I think this is too dark. But that's already sort of better color separation, so we're just going to add in some more blue. There we go. That's what we were looking for. Which hopefully means that this with PBR6 will give some similar results. I'm not unhappy with Oh yeah, <laughs> looks really beautiful. I'm, like, I'm not unhappy with what I've mixed so far, but I'd like... Oh yeah, there we go. Sometimes you just need to change your blue. So, let's swatch out each of these and I will label them. Apparently, I can't do a circle today. Weird little shape. This is the cobalt green pale. Super separated in its pan. Looks almost less separated here, but as it dries, you'll see sort of what it looks like. This is the blue that I used for the tundra and for the tundra pink and for the first attack at mixing the blue and the purple. Here's the potter's pink. As always, I will leave all of the brands that I used for the mixing down below. I'm just going to throw the pigment numbers up underneath each of these dots because otherwise it makes this page far too busy and no one wants to look at a page that has too much information on it for them to really figure out what's on the page in actuality. This is common small cypress umber deep, cypress raw umber deep. Its name is too long. I need to have a shorter name. <laughs> and then here's the ultramarine blue we ended up using for the last two. And as you can see, it's significantly lighter and it's got a lot more granulation to it. So. Here's the pen. This is... This is PB29, this is There we go. So those are all the colors that we use to mix. So we used more colors to mix than we ended up uh, making. I'm wondering how many colors in the end will be used in mixes versus how many we end up making. 
I wonder if the math works out to buy each individual pigment or to just have a set of the colors you really want. So it's be quite interesting to do. I'm disappointed about the green, but I think I probably knew that my tundra green was going to be off. It's this such a hard pigment to track down the PG-19 that finding one that was the exact right sort of tone of green is not going to be easy. And that's what our problem was. I'm happy that the change in ultramarine fixed our issues with the tundra purple and the tundra blue. I can never figure out tundra pink at the ratio it's supposed to be. There's no way for the ultramarine to be at a higher percentage for it not to be a purple. Like, you don't get the pink color without it having pink at a higher percentage. Um, so, I'm wondering if the tubes are mislabeled. Because I have now tried to mix it. I did it in the Potter's Pink video. I spent... After that video, I spent some time trying to do it by myself, and now I've done it here, and so that's three separate times I've tried to mix it, and I can't get it at the stated ratio. So, I'm wondering if there's been a labeling mix-up and it's actually flipped, but who knows. For now, though, I think we have our starting point. So, I think both of these ultramarines are gonna be in rotation, all of these colors are going to stick around because they come up in feature palettes and we're just going to slowly add to it. So I'm going to use a piece of paper that I tore earlier and just start to keep track. So I hope you enjoy part one. There are many more parts to come and keep watching to find out how to mix for your favorite Schmincase for granulating colors. Mm -hmm. 